Jamie. I'm Jamie. I'm Justina. And this is Just So You you Know. know. We're crazy today. Crazy. Okay, it's 100 degrees outside. (laughs) Literally. I'm sweating. I'm wearing a bathing suit. Crazy. Ready for the pool this weekend. Are you going to the pool this weekend? I am. Lovely. Yeah, I'll be at the pool. I could be at the pool. Really? My my little pool's getting it's not uh, summarized. I think it's called. Well, there's no Winterized. water in your pool yet. <laughs> there is, but I got a little baby pool for my little feetsies, and you know what? That's all I need. It's like a little baby pool. Well, it's so funny that this conversation has already diverted into self care and <laughs> relaxation because today's episode, guys, is going to be about how to avoid burnout as an activist, how right. to take care of yourself, advice. For vegan activists, advice for people looking to get active, but also be active in the long run. Because the right. animals need us in the long run, not for just a couple weeks, months, or years. They, exactly. They need us fighting for them forever. This is this is a topic for Jamie because Jamie, in particular, between the two of us, she doesn't know how to stop. I don't. She doesn't know how to slow down. And I mean, I used to be that way with my acting career, but when it comes to animal act activism, I was hesitant from the beginning to even get involved in the world because I know how emotionally like influenced I am and it's it is a really sad world sometimes you know it can be fun because we're excited that we all care the food Mm -hmm. is delicious like we you find that community that you're like you get me but the reality is we're bonding for tra- we're trauma bonding. <laughs> <laughs> we're trauma bonding yeah. over this ridiculous yeah. fucking issue that just bleeds into every single like market. It's mm-hmm. insane. So Jamie, you need to slow down and take care of yourself and I'm glad we're going to talk about this because you you are doing that. You're learning. Thank you. Yeah, I I th- I think you know when I think about what's happening to the animals, it doesn't feel like I'm ever doing enough. I hear you. <laughs> you know, and it's just how through this episode we're going to talk through ways to stay as active as somebody like myself is but Mm -hmm. also how to take care of yourself and some of the tips and tricks behind that and in today's episode you guys we have a great guest coming on shaka smith he's a vegan actor a lawyer a wellness coach and he's gonna give us some great advice that'll hopefully help us yes so i went vegan close to seven years ago and when i first went vegan i was kind of quiet about it but then i started seeing more and more videos of what was happening to the animals and i was like i just can't not speak up about this right so my cousin actually got me involved in doing the av cubes the anonymous for the voiceless Mm. cubes where we show people standard practices of what happens to the animals and we educate publicly on the street and it's very peaceful and it's changing lives right before your eyes and it got me I think well versed in the information and how to speak to people right Mm -hmm. so I started doing that and through the AV cubes I met other activists that invited me to demos and protests and then I started going to vigils Mm -hmm. and vigils changed my life vigils are scary vigils are where we go to slaughterhouses and we bear witness and we give the animals water document the conditions and we show up for them before they are taken inside slaughterhouses yeah that's a lot so i started going to these every other week in college okay this bitch she was like my new hobby i'm like thank you so much for your service but like girl Dude, five in the morning and i'm like at a slaughterhouse and then i would have classes all day afterwards that's how you know she's a gemini she's like crazy I, yo it was crazy and i think that there it is so important it for is. activists to go to vigils because that's really what lit the fire under me to like always speak up i remember looking at this one goat who no, i know not a I named him Oreo. He was so cute. He was like black and white and he was so friendly. He kept putting his head outside the truck and I was petting him and playing with him. I was with him for like an hour before they took him in. And I just remember looking at him and being like, I will never stop speaking up for you. Like, I can't save you, but I will do my very best to save and the others that come after you. you Yeah. So that changed me. And from that those moments after going to these vigils i became very militant right like to the point where you were like absolutely not it was unbearable to be around me yeah because i was living with my dad at the time in jersey because that's where i went to school and i was commuting and i would literally look at my dad 
take him his milk carton, dump it in his face, and say, not your mom, not your milk. Okay? And I would write chicken periods. I would cross out the eggs and write chicken periods on his egg carton. I, w- I would harass him. To the Aww. point where, I mean, I'm right. I, morally, You're not I'm, wrong, but. No, but I think that there are, in my opinion, more effective ways about going about getting the message through to him, which maybe it works for some people, but for him, it was just making him more and more resistant. Yeah, he was like, my message. daughter is crazy. What the fuck? Not only this, I started, it, when I tell you I was at a protest almost every single day, I was like, it was the first thing I thought about when I woke up, the last thing I thought about before bed. Mm. I was losing who I was, right. who Jamie was. In in high school, I was a funny, charismatic, very easygoing, go with the flow person. I never got political with people. I always wanted to like keep things light and fun. and And I wanted to treat people with kindness and and make people happy like that's who i i i am Mm -hmm. and i was losing who i was right and so back in i guess it was 2022 i was working for a film company and i was just editing horrific animal slaughter footage you were just angry and my boss at the time said to me i want to come and film one of your av cubes and we filmed one of the av cubes long story short i'm gonna wrap it up but get to the point (laughs) Where's your burnout? Because it sounds down. like you, you were like lighting the fire. You weren't this, burning out. You were like, ah, this is ah, the fucking burnout. You're not listening. I'm listening. I, I then started Jamie's Corner, which okay. is the show that I have now. You where had to put yourself in a corner to relax. You were like, hey. yeah, I had to be restrained. <laughs> The whips came out. So I'm like, I'm now in my Jamie's Corner era and I'm doing my street style interviews. And I think I'm being just as effective as as I was before, but it's sustainable. That's the key word. It's fun for me to do. It's sustainable. And I think that it is reaching the people I want to reach in a more effective way. Something that I'm working on right now is like not losing yourself Mm -hmm. and remembering the lightness and joy and like charismatic aspect of your personality yes. that is also a gift and that is also a way to help transform people because if people focus on the way that the message is they focus on the way the message is delivered a lot of the time right. rather than the actual message because people don't really so, listen yeah we're going to talk about some self-care tips as well and as i have matured as an individual and as i've practiced more self-care and gotten very into yoga and spirituality mm-hmm. I have learned, too, that veganism means being kind to all living beings. And that means humans, too. Yes. People think that it's an it's only a selfless action, which going vegan, it is selfless in a lot of ways. Yeah. But when you look at karma and you look at yeah. what you're doing and what you're putting out, that comes back to you. Right. So if you're treating others with kindness, kindness will be returned to you in, right. in so many other ways. And I think going vegan is the bare minimum. It's a great place to start. And then right. from there, you can advocate for other things. But right. Remembering who you really are, and I think who we really are inside of us, we we our true nature is happiness, yeah. and it is joy. And when we act from that place, and we show people that we are rooting for you, we want you to be healthier. Mm-hmm. We want you to live a longer life. Mm-hmm. We want you to also live a life that doesn't cause as much suffering to others. Right? Because most vegan. people want to do yes. something impactful yes. on this planet, right? We just don't know how to balance well, because very well. So many people are living in a state where they're working paycheck to paycheck and they're I trying know. to just survive. And it's like Survival trying mode. to they're just going to get food and they're trying to put uh, a house over their family's heads. Right. And they don't have that time to sit down, reflect and be like, OK, let me take care let of me myself. Be realistic. Let me pause. Yeah. And actually, my friend Marissa said this to me the other day. She says, I think. Now that I've taken time off of work, she transitioned out of her very demanding job. Mm. She said that she's had the time to reflect and that actually that silence and that pause is making her more drawn towards going vegan because Mm. she's having the time to think about what she's eating, what she's ingesting and putting into her body. And so I think a lot of people are in this state of like, go, 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 go. And they're not reflecting. And they they, they dismiss, 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 dismiss. Anything that's foreign that they don't get. They're like, I challenge their beliefs. yeah. Yeah. They're like, I do enough right right and and i understand it i i i I also was there i really want to hear shaka smith's perspective on all of this how we can live in alignment with ourselves with the animals how to 
to really nurture a a wellness ritual in our in our daily practices right. um, and also how to just avoid burnout and fight for the animals in the long run how can we be the most effective 100 percent. well I, I met shaka at an event once and oh well, obviously it came to our lunch party too but i remember when i first met him i the first thing i noticed was grounded energy mm. you know mm. what do you do on your daily yeah. to like feel so balanced obviously i'm no he's i'm sure he's not perfect nobody is but he's got great skin he's great skin yeah yes we'll ask about the skin but that's the too. inside and out <laughs> yeah what's your skincare routine <laughs> should we start with that question <laughs> let's start okay. with that question okay shaka smith everybody yeah. let's bring him on um so i'm an actor um content creator also a lawyer as well okay um, <laughs> a little dibble and dabble um but you know i just you know i thought it was important to have my law degree just in life just to know <laughs> what goes on but right. acting was always my passion so i came out to move out to la um, but the vegan journey was interesting because, you know, I've been introduced to veganism several times throughout my life. And I always thought there's no way I would go vegan. Mm, you know, Caribbean family meat is such a heavy thing and it's so tied to our culture. So it just right. didn't even, no way. Um, and then one day um, I saw a video by Annette Larkins. Um, I was at work one day and she's 73 and she looks, you know, 40 or 35 and she was just vegan. And I looked up old vegans because I want to see like if she was a fool. <laughs> I was like, is she a fluke? You're like, what is a hundred of vegans? <laughs> yeah. And so I looked up old vegans and they were all looking amazing. But more importantly than that, some of them that didn't look like super young were still active. They were active as if they were young. Marathons and doing this. So that day I made the decision I'm going vegan. That was it for me. Mm. But I knew that I could not do it overnight. I just, it wasn't going to happen. So that day that I decided to go vegan, I said, I'm going to do a three-year plan. You know, first year, get rid of red meat. Second year, um, I'll go pescatarian. And the third year, I'll be vegan. And that was really important from a self-care perspective for me mm. because I knew I had to take care of myself on the journey because if I didn't, I'd abandon the journey completely. Right. And so that was sort of my first, you know, that's that was my vegan journey, how I started. It sounds like you went vegan for a well, from a wellness perspective mm -hmm. at first. Yeah. And then over time, when you discover, wait, there's a bigger thing at, at hand. And so for me, it was climate change and the animals. Mm -hmm. And that was another self-care perspective, because as it became more animal focused on veganism, which, you know, when I first went vegan, it was about the food. And then I was like, wait, veganism is a lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And that's another thing you have to realize that, you know, it's something you can apply through, you know, from your clothing, your skincare, everything. And I didn't realize that at first. And so that process was it made me more emp em um, empathic towards the animals and empathic towards the planet, of course. And I thought that was just a, a great part of the growth of being vegan. Mm. So you became very outspoken about li living in alignment with your morals and, and wellness. And you started a wellness channel. So tell us a little mm. bit how you went from just transitioning to a vegan to actually starting up a brand. You know, it was always important for me because... Um, when I went vegan, I realized that for a lot of minorities, we weren't getting these messages. You know, I, right. I was I felt lucky that I stumbled on these messages. Um, but, you know, a lot of times it's not people that look like you that are advocating for the messages. Yeah. And it doesn't resonate as a result. So I started um, Fit Club, which was a podcast, which was meant to be sort of, you know, let's get this information that's applicable to everyone. But let's really focus it towards the minority community so that we're getting these messages as well. Mm. And that was kind of how it all began. And um, Fit Club now turned into a podcast called Wander Well, where mm. I can really talk about um, a full 360 um, wellness sort of idea of how we should kind of go about living life and kind of find that balance. I love that. And it's, it's so true. You don't really see – well, now we see more people of color talking about yeah. veganism. But it, it, in the beginning, in my vegan journey, I, I didn't. For me, it was one of those things where, you know, you have these cultural foods. You're going to go back home for Thanksgiving. You're going to be right. with your family. You want to fully engage. Right. So you don't want veganism to be a rejection of your culture. You don't right. want it to be a rejection of your family. And when, one thing that changed for me was realizing all the foods and all the things and tastes I lo loved – those were spices. Right. All of those were plant based. Mm -hmm. You know, it's the flavor exactly. of the meat that I liked. It was these flavorings. And once I kind of realized that, wait a minute, we can we can go somewhere with this. You know. Right. Well, what would you say um, when someone says, "Does food affect your mental health?" Because that's something that I try to tell uh, the community. Like, hey, one thing when I went vegan, my brain cleared the fuck up. So, mm -hmm. like, what would you say as someone who's involved in health and wellness when it comes to that? 
Yeah, I always say, uh, and I got this from a friend, um, vegan fat kid. I don't know if you know him, um, but he always says the brain. I mean, the stomach is a second brain. Right. Literally, any food that you ingest is going to affect chemicals in your brain. Mm -hmm. Anything. Food is drugs. You know, right. food are drugs, and in the sense that your brain chemistry is affected by anything that you eat. Mm -hmm. um, your cortisol will be released. These different serotonin might be up. So everything's going to have an effect. So once you realize that, you really start to pay attention to what you put in your body. Mm -hmm. Right. What 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 are some tools that you use to keep yourself mentally at ease? Because like what Jamie was saying, like as activists, it could be very, very draining. And mm -hmm. it, you, you, you all of a sudden go back mm -hmm. or stay in survival mode, you know, and it can be really difficult to keep going. Like what what some of your pieces of advice or what do you do? Well, number one is setting boundaries. You know, I yeah. think we all have a sense of what works for us in terms of our emotional wellness. And so setting boundaries and having grace for yourself, because yeah. this idea of I'm fighting for something bigger than me, I have to keep pushing myself can lead to the sort of guilt if you're not able to do that. Right. So you have to find a moment of grace and say, wait, I'm doing what I can. And if, in order for me to continue this fight, I have to be at my best. Right. And so that that was really important. The grace for myself saying, I forgive myself for not going to this. I don't even have to forgive myself, but I will because tomorrow another fight is going to be there and I have to be ready for that as well. One thing that I find that's very complicated in the vegan movement specifically is division and infighting. And so can you talk a little bit about that? What to do if you are an activist that number one, doesn't agree with the way somebody else is doing something. And then number two, let's say you're an activist that's getting attacked from other activists. What is your advice surrounding that? Yeah, so I, I'll say that that's an important part of wellness in general. I think we always think of wellness as this sort of amorphous thing. But you have physical wellness, you have emotional wellness, you have social wellness. Mm. And this is part of the social wellness part is, A, you want to make sure you have a community around you that actually supports you and that you feel supported by. Um, and then you're going to have friends that are up for certain fights that you're not up for. And that right. part of communities, you know, I personally have trouble going to a vigil, you know, but I know that other friends can do that. So I can support mm -hmm. them in doing that. And then they can support me when I'm doing something that they can't make it to or they can't do. So that's important, too. And then when you have an activist that, I guess, doesn't agree with the way you're doing certain things or attacking the way that you're doing certain things, for me, it's important to remember we all have the same goal. Right. You know, and especially where we're really fighting against, you know, it's a heavy fight. You know, right. we're a minor, we're an extreme minority and we're yeah. fighting against corporations and societal norms. And so... We have to be united in that. So if an activist is upset with me about something, I just, I personally say they're probably a little bit earlier in their activism journey and I have grace for them in that sense. You know, so I'm just gonna wait for them to come back around. Cause mm -hmm. I've seen it happen before. People get really overzealous and then months or years later they go, you know what? That was a little too much, but I'm glad we're still in the space together. So even yeah. with yeah. all of what, these, what, what were you going to say, say something? I, I was saying, I, when, I think it's important to also have empathy for the person and right. their journey as someone who's not vegan. You know, because I, I just remember times when I wasn't vegan, I was like, I refused to be vegan. But I feel like even those messages had a place in getting me vegan eventually because mm -hmm. I just heard it so often. I heard it. So it was in there, even yeah. though it was rejected. So but when I saw something and I was able to flip the switch all those messages were part of the part of the journey of it, you know? Exactly. So sometimes we say something to someone, it's not landing. It might land five years from now, 10 years from now, right. but you've done your part and you got to let go of the expectation. I feel like I get hit from every angle. I'm like, I'm getting hit from meat eaters. I'm getting hit from my close family and friends. I'm getting hit from vegans that are attacking me because right. I'm not speaking up about this issue and that issue and you're not doing enough and you're not doing this. It's like, how do you stay positive, Shaka? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know. I've I've always had the belief that um, time is sort of the greatest winner, right? If I'm doing what I believe is right, right, you'll see it. You know, it might not be tomorrow, it might not be next year, but if I'm doing the same thing that's right over and over the ten years, fifteen, twenty years, it's going to be seen, and people are going to take those positive messages in the right way. And so I just kind of rely on the fact that of being consistent with my messaging mm. and with how I'm kind of grounding myself in the movement. Your leading by example is going to be effective at some point, mm -hmm. you know? And yeah. focusing on yourself. Yeah. I love that you said that. Yeah. yeah, and unfortunately, I love social media because you do get positive feedback. You get negative feedback too, of course. But the positive feedback, I want to say within like three or four weeks of me going vegan and sharing more of my journey, I had people contacting me saying they're going vegan oh. and they're getting their families to go vegan. And so once that... I just needed one of those messages. That right. was it for me. 
you know, because now I know that anything I put out in the world can have that effect. And I love that you brought up, okay, so you're getting positive comments, you're getting negative comments. Being a man and being a guy and masculine and, you, you know, you got you probably get different comments than, let's say, we do some of the yeah. time. So I'm <laughs> super curious, Have do you get a lot of guys or people coming at you being like, soy boy or, you know, what's how are you vegan? That's a girly uh, thing. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean... I wouldn't say it's excessive, but you get those comments on like a post or something. And I haven't had those in a while. When I first went vegan, I got a little bit more of those and I was in the bodybuilding world. Uh But again, you know, I was in the bodybuilding world and I was winning. So it was like, well, (laughs) the proof is in the the pudding there. Um, So, yeah, it it just never concerned me. I was just really focused on kind of because I knew if I focused on that, it's going to actually take away from my success. Right. Mm. You know, there's other things you're trying to do. You know, you're whether it's bodybuilding or acting, if I'm focused on negative comments, and trying to clap back or, you know, argue or fight, that's going to take away from my success in other areas. It trains you, yeah. So the best way for me to do, to be successful, to be an advocate, is to be successful myself so that that message can go further and farther. Everybody's wondering, everybody's asking at this point in the podcast, what are some great rituals and self-care routines? Mm. Like, I want you to walk us through a day in the life of Shaka. Give us the, <laughs> the morning routines, the sadhana, the meditation, the prayer, whatever the hell you do. And yeah. bring us to the end of the night. Well, well, and, and the important thing to remember, it's a practice, right? I do think sometimes we get it right and then we forget to keep practicing, right? right. We we for, like, we stop the journaling, we stop the gratitude practice because mm-hmm. it all feels good, you know? So it's a practice throughout your entire life. You're going to have to continue doing the things that keep you in alignment, right? Um, for me, I wake up early. I like to, you know, like 6 a.m., 6.30 I have an infrared sauna. I hit my infrared sauna. That's really good. I love red light therapy. Mm-hmm. Um, and I got to and I got to go to the gym. You know, I got to make sure that physically that's where I start. It's my physical wellness. And then, of course, I start thinking about my mental wellness as well. And so that'll sometimes manifest itself into a gratitude journal. Mm-hmm. And I'll just write down all the things I'm happy for all the things. And sometimes the gratitude journal is I'll have a negative gratitude journal, too. And that is sort of thanking God or um, the universe for the negative things that have happened. I think so often we're like, why this? Why that? You got to have supreme faith to say, thank you, God, for that car accident. Right. Because you just know somehow or other it's part of a better plan for you. Right. Mm. So that has also helped is saying thank you for the bad things, you know, (laughs) because I can I can have that faith. And then for me, it's just making sure I talk to people that support me. If I'm with people or conversing with people that I don't feel good about. Mm -hmm. I got to step away. Right. And I think sometimes we forget that we have this intuition where if someone does not make you feel good, you don't have to be there. Right. <laughs> you, know? you can remove yourself right. and it doesn't have to be a conversation. It doesn't have to be an argument. It can be a simple step back. And I think that's helped me the most because, you know, in LA, you meet a lot of different personalities and I'm just like, that doesn't feel good. Let me step back, protect my energy. And that's been huge for me as well. Wow. That's so true. You have the permission to walk away. That's really yeah. good advice. So you talked about like routines. You go to the gym. You got your journals. What the, about food? The red sun. She's like, what about food? Okay. <laughs> food? Well, so I intermittent fast. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So, so, so most of the day in my eating, which is great because I have so much more energy when I'm like, you know, a little bit emptier. And then at nighttime is when I'll have all my calories, all my carbs, my protein, my fats. Same. For the most part. Yeah, so you know. Oh my God. So I, you know. Just, I just sho- shoved my face with a vegan croissant before coming here. I can't. Hey, have I'll do grace, liquids. Though. Yeah, I have grace. That's fine. Yeah, it, because not sometimes you're going to be like, I need that croissant. That's right. right. Exactly. And so, uh, though I intermittent fast, I'd say like 90% of the time, there are some days you're like, you know what, I'm going to go to this <laughs> French vegan bakery yeah. and get this crazy thing that I didn't know could exist, existed, right. you know? So that kind of thing. Right. Mm. It's it's all about the intention and mental aspect of it. I mean, I got my first tattoo. Um, I'm a baby and I never thought I would actually get a tattoo, but I have four boxes like representing like a checkoff list. And it's basically mind, body, soul, and your heart. And mm-hmm. I like completely dif- differentiate, differentiate, dif- dif- differentiate, differentiate, differentiate. Yeah, I'll differentiate. Yo, <laughs> wow! I like that. You only write podcasts and you can't say differentiate. Listen, I create words. I create <laughs> lifestyles. And let me just say this: is like all this is like from the perspective of at least for me. 
I don't have a family. I don't have kids. I'm not having to, you know, struggle for three or four jobs. Right. So it might look different if that's what you're going through. Yeah. But you got to find those moments to kind of remind yourself, I still have to check in with myself, even though I have obligations that might be bigger than myself. I love that you said that. Yeah. It's so true. So what is next for you uh, as we begin to wrap things up? Tell us what's next and where people can find you. Well, I've got my my podcast, The Wonderwell Podcast, which is all about kind of just, you know, living life well. But I think for a lot of us, we know what to do after a loss. And I really want to address how do, what do we do after a win? You know, sometimes you get that win, you get to that place where you were working so hard for, and then you're like, wait, what do I do now? Hi, hi. Um, and then how do I savor what I just achieved? Mm-hmm. And so in that, in that sense, I talk to different individuals who have done it and can give us some nuggets of wisdom from that. So um, that's that. my sort of ongoing project. I got a short film called The Heart of War, um, which focuses um, a lot about some of the uh, the struggles that people have in the military mm. um, from PTSD, sexual assault, drug abuse. And so that's making its round of the film festivals now and trying to turn that Amazing. into a feature. Great. Congratulations. Were you in the military? No, I wasn't in the military, okay. but I had friends that were in the military and that shared with me all these stories. Mm. And, you know, it's just it's just one of those things where, you know, it, people can get caught in the military and get stuck in these cycles and right. systems that actually do not serve them exactly. um and so when you come out of the military if you're not being taken care of it's something i want to address um yeah mm, that's beautiful I love that. you're doing such great work um thank you for for all that you're doing and thank you for giving us wisdom on how we can continue doing the impactful work that needs to be done mm-hmm. um and and not burn out so, and where's what's your instagram oh yeah handle? what's your instagram what the hell oh. Yeah, Shaka Strong, Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, the whole deal. Y'all can find me. He's a strong, Shaka Strong. Okay. Well, thanks so much, Shaka. <laughs> Thank you, guys. When it comes to ways and advocating, I think as activists, we always need to be analyzing what is most effective, what is working, what is not. And right. it might be different individual to individual. Yeah. Because I know for me, the way that I actually finally made the decision to go vegan was because somebody was mean to me about it. Right. And somebody like really made me uncomfortable and that right. got me thinking. And I honestly think that for me, if somebody was like, oh, you'll get there and was super nice about it. I don't know if I would have changed as soon as I did. Right. So different approaches are going to work for different people. 100%. But mainly from this episode, what I've taken away is know when to set your boundaries. Yes. And also diversify your activism. If you are, Yeah. If you're doing like hardcore protests every single weekend, losing your voice, and you, you find that you're not able to keep up with it physically, mentally, it's too much. Instead of maybe going to that protest, you could go to something else. You right. could maybe just treat yourself to a spa day like take it easy because the animals need us in the long run like mm-hmm. this is an issue where we need you to continue fighting for them and 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 not get caught up in the activist drama not yeah. get caught up you know in forcing yourself to do something you don't want to do yeah right i know that we, we, well, I know you. You're always like, no, over, no, do it now, and and I and I get that. But as an activist myself, I get burnt out if I'm like that with people so yeah. much. So you, you know? have to know your boundaries. But also, I think the biggest thing too is finding a support system. Yes. So we have each other. A thousand we have, percent. You know, I'm going away for the weekend right after this with friends upstate. We're gonna enjoy the weekend, enjoy nature, go for a hike. Mm-hmm. Like we're taking time to just spend the time with each other and, yeah. and and finding a support system because we live in a non-vegan world where right. you will literally go crazy. You it, will go crazy. Uh, amongst non-vegans, seeing advertisements for animal body parts everywhere. Like I find know. a vegan friend for God's sakes, please. Right. That will that will help you. I'm it telling will. you, avoid burnout. Okay, well on that note, we love you guys. We hope that you have found family here with us, with PETA. I mean, PETA was really one of my first activist homes where yeah, I felt same. like now I can get on the front lines and do more and have a support system to do that and have materials to do more, right? Right. PETA will give you stickers. You they'll they'll send things. They'll give you stickers. They'll who doesn't <laughs> love stickers? Flyers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, who doesn't love a sticker? Oh no, God. truly, PETA PETA definitely made me realize like there are people there are out there that care that are doing the heavy lifting and it's like okay how can i be a part of that exactly well thank you pita thank you guys so much for listening to this episode it was really wonderful to have shaka smith on and learn more from him and without further ado you know the drill i am at it's jamie's corner i'm at justina dot justina this is just so you know podcast give pita a follow yes rate us 
like us, subscribe, comment, share, share, share. You guys, we need you to share this podcast. If there is a friend who may or may not take something away from this episode or any of our other episodes, don't be afraid to harass them with the many, many shares of each episode. We'll harass them for you. Yeah. Guys, you know the drill. We'll be back. 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 back. And we will not be burned out.